digital media pioneer Maria Ressa is the founder of online site Rappler. Maria, what is fake news? It is whatever power doesn't like. The president of the Philippines, Rodrigo Duterte, says he wants to kill as many people involved with drugs as possible and lists his critics as public enemies. Don't Rappler, an online news site known to be critical of the government, had its license revoked a few weeks ago. The end goal is to silence dissent. When people don't know what is real and what is fake, when facts don't matter, then the voice with the loudest megaphone gains more power. I'm facing seven cases, some of which can put me to jail up to 15 years. Now, Rappler's boss says a war of attrition is underway, one she and her colleagues are determined to win. Here's what we know. We know that an arrest warrant has been issued. Obviously, um, it makes you feel vulnerable. But I think that's the point, right? You know, this is the time to fight. This is the time to tell people, here, here's the line. And you have to make sure that our government doesn't cross it, because when it does, we're no longer a democracy. I am a pretend millennial, but I'm turning 55, 55 years old. Wow, I've been a journalist for uh, more than 30 years. Ah, sorry. I can't remember it. Alexa, play best playlist. Resuming Spotify. When our president, Rodrigo Duterte, was elected, the campaign machinery that helped elect him uh, was weaponized and went after anyone who was critical of the drug war, and also journalists in particular were targeted. This is a war for truth. And the biggest casualty in the war for truth is how many people have been killed in the drug war. I'm at the front lines. I feel it. I know it. I have the data to prove it. Here's what happened in the Philippines when Facebook became too toxic. I watch Alexa ranking every day, which is a website ranking of, of all the, where do people, Filipinos go? And before, I know it's Alexa. Oh. <laughs> How come you have Alexa? It doesn't, doesn't record. It mesh. Why? Because you're fighting disinformation and the use of your data, and yet you have Alexa. How can you plan for the future of what we can become if you don't try it? Part of the problem with old power right now is they don't understand new technology. And part of the problem with the people who build the new technology is they don't understand old power. That's what needs to merge. Facebook changed our world. And in the Philippines, it really is the internet. The journalist role as gatekeepers, that's dead. In the end, it comes down to the tech platforms, social media in particular, will determine what gets delivered to people. In January of 2018, the government of the Philippines tried to shut Rappler down. We're being investigated, and then we're, we're facing legal cases, one on ownership that could land me in prison for anywhere from five to 15 years. The Court of Appeals came out with a decision after midnight. Uh, they denied our appeal. It's harassment. It is to distract us. It is to stop us from reporting. It's to intimidate us so we don't, um, so we don't challenge. I think the, the biggest wake-up call for the government was the, the day after they, they tried to shut down Rappler. There was a global reaction to it, so I don't think they counted on that. They also didn't count that Rappler would fight. Rappler was a dream. In 2011, a group of friends and I kind of thought that 
there's this new technology that is that we can't completely try out inside traditional networks because everything that made traditional media successful will go against what we wanted to do. Hello, Ms. Hello, Lens, what can I tweet? Can I tweet something? No, 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 no. I-like mo na lang yung post ko. What's your post? Psalm 23. Let's post that story. That's the best statement, Glenda. Iti Clemente. Yeah. We started with 12 people. Four or five of us were above 40 at that point. Um, and, uh, and then we hired the smartest 20-somethings we could find. Is this a good look with the, with the mug? Yeah. Um, and what do you want? How do I fix my hair? I think it's largely unfixable. I mean, I've been trying to fix it for, for 40 years, and it's... Why don't I start, because you're, you're from the London School of Economics, I will uh, introduce you to Peter Pomeranza, who's done a lot of the groundbreaking work on looking at Russian disinformation. Peter Pomeranza, welcome to Manila. Let me just figure out, we're being manipulated. There are disinformation and misinformation campaigns by both state actors and private interests. What do we do about it? There's a much deeper question, is that social media has kind of fueled a new type of what I might term pop-up populism, much more emotional, and with an enemy, a very abstract one, who is blocking your very private grievances. The establishment, the elite, foreigners, doesn't matter. So you, you actually wrote a lot about Russian disinformation. How would you define that? Think about it from the point of view of a leader with authoritarian tendencies. So back in the 20th century, you could, you could shut off your population with censorship. Right. You could just block off TV channels. You can't do that anymore. Right. So instead of trying to censor things, you spread as much cynicism as possible. You undermine the idea of trust. You say, yeah, maybe our media isn't perfect. The BBC, CNN, Rappler, they're all bored. And once you undermine the idea that there is any kind of truth out there, then all that's kind of left is emotion. And so only the most emotional uh, and viscerally emotional leader wins. It seemed like in the short term, uh, only the tech giants have the ability to quickly fix certain things. If we start uniting right. the forces of good, <laughs> no, but that's something we can do tomorrow. It is true. Pooling our research. Right, right, right. Yeah? Yeah. Pooling and our that techniques. Started. That started. It started, yeah. And we needed a little bit, of maybe some resources to help with that. Right. Um, so we start acting sort of strategically. Facebook has admitted that the Philippines is patient zero in the war against disinformation. In 2016, the campaign machinery of now President Duterte used Facebook and social media to win an election. But they didn't stop there. We began to see these vicious attacks on Facebook against anyone who questioned the killings in the drug war. And in October, I wrote this three-part series on the propaganda war. When we released it, I was attacked. The propaganda machine came after us with a bang, and it was immediate. You know, I've been called every animal you can think of. I've, my sexual life has been dissected. And at the beginning, I faced it like a traditional journalist where you try to fight it. Then you realize, no, you can't. It's not built that way. You, you don't fight this by looking at content. You fight this by looking at networks and looking at algorithms. That's when I realized something new is going on and we began gathering data. So we call it the Shark Tank, but what it is is it's truly big data. We created a database of social networks that spread disinformation that have been used in attacks. So we have you know, more than 350 million comments, more than 15 million accounts. So it's a big data set. It is probably the largest outside of Facebook. The key thing here is to go back to the way the Duterte campaign ran the social media uh, campaigns. It is so organized that they have a content creator for the elite, then there's a content creator, a blogger for the middle class, and then the blogger for the mass base is now the head of the social media 
for the presidential palace. By looking at that database, you can pull out keywords, you can pull out attacks, and you can get to exactly how the attack began and the velocity of spread. We took the shark tank, we connected it to a Slack channel. If something is spreading beyond a certain frequency, it will send us all an alert. Once we fact check it, we can send it to Facebook, and Facebook will depress it in the algorithm. In August of 2016, I gave Facebook the data that we had, and I said, you really have to look at this because you know you have US elections coming up, and this is so alarming that Trump could win. <laughs> and we all laughed. We laughed. <laughs> and then when Trump won in November, they asked me for the data again. In the French elections, that data helped pull down 30,000 fake accounts. This database, this big data, is, is the story of how a robust democracy became a dictatorship. I mean, that's certainly where we seem to be headed. Right? So we can still fight it, and we're using the data to do that. Look at you guys! Okay, blue is the color. This? I'm gonna, this is Greece. Hello, Benji! How are you? These legal processes are being used against us. That does have impact on the business because the minute an advertiser now signs a contract with Rappler, there's a risk involved for them. So what we did is very quickly when we saw the trend and that, that advertisers were scared, we then came up with a whole slew of different products that we could offer. So discovering the propaganda machine led us to our new business model, if you think about it. What's the specific thing we're selling here locally? It is what we did, building community for what we did for Rappler is what we are, we're offering to do for them, but it is data driven. Building through social media. Narrative strategy and then distribution strategy. But when I look at what Cambridge Analytica did and how, you know, uh, certain political parties use social media to understand and then, fab and, and then create messaging and then target, I mean, in essence, that's a lot of what this is. And I'm just wondering whether there's been a... So I, I can talk and then yeah. Carlo can also talk. So Cause, for me... Because the cynical view is, oh, this is psychological manipulation using technology. You marketing. Sorry? Right, marketing, marketing in general. <laughs> Which is actually... <laughs> there you go. Remember what was wrong with Cambridge Analytica. It wasn't the psychological analysis. It was the way they got their data. Mm. Right? The breach. The breach of yeah. the data. So, so you're, in the sense is, it's okay to, let's say, influence your psychological outlook, but it's not okay to steal data. Is that really where yes. the world's ending up on it? Companies don't know how to use social media well, except yeah. to put ads in Facebook, and they're realizing that that's yeah. not a good thing. Do you think mom and dad are awake? Yeah, we should. It's their anniversary, right? Yeah. Hi, mom. Oh, I was gonna send you the photo from Florida. You gotta see. Talk to talk to mom and dad. I'm gonna show you the photo. So, so we're having um, we're having dinner. The kids are here. Nino's here. Happy anniversary. Bye, guys. Love you. Love you, mom and dad. Bye. Dear Lord, um, thank you for this meal. Please put a hedge of protection around all of us and those that we love and those that we care for so that we uh, can walk in your light. Amen. Amen. One is mine alone. Don't anyone touch. <laughs> you see the case? Yes. Yes, the appeals. What did impression did you get? I worry often. <laughs> I'm not gonna get emotional. Ah. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> How about you guys? Do you guys worry about Tita Maria? Yeah. Ah. Don't worry about me. I, I worry about you. <laughs> also, I, I think that you just tell me what you think I need to know, which is probably okay too. Um, but the end goal of all of this is to actually take up space. So the less space it takes up, the better, right? I guess for me, I, I fix it with a lot of prayer. So what do you have to do after here? I really have to work. Maybe I can finish by midnight.
When the case came and they were threatening to shut us down, we were like, we're not going to duck. That's like an old way. French fries. Yeah? I'm connecting. Who's connecting me? I put me things. We are looking for new products that Rappler can build, right? Obviously, we're working on it, but we'd like to work with you because every person in this room has not just displayed great talent at what they do, but is also committed in a different way. So that's our end goal. This is my family, it really is. I mean, so I don't have kids, right? I realize my, my longest relationship is with journalism. Guys, you will get, I will send an email of all of the awards that you've gotten because they've been incredible. Uh, it's been a good year, even if it's been a bad, uh, difficult start to the year, okay? But I think the energy of the folks are one of the reasons we survive and we continue barreling through. There's nothing, it feels like when we act like a team, nothing will get in our way. <laughs> we can barrel through it. People are throwing their lives into it, right? People, it's not just me. It's our, it's rappers. Look at their faces. Oh my God, see, they make me emotional. Um, they believe. So I believe. And we're gonna win. Yeah, that's it. Anyway, stop. <laughs> um, Actually, the easy part is the rational, right? It's really taking care of the team. to look for hope in collaboration. It's hope in solidarity. I came to Paris to join this commission. It's an inaugural meeting of about 20 people who are working on disinformation in different parts of the world. President Macron will meet with us, and it's something that is it's, it's really an initiative by the reporters, RSF, Reporters Sense Frontiers. I think the technology platforms, the social media platforms, are forced to confront what they've created, that what they've done now is allowed uh, evil networks to take over, and that has actually had an impact on democracies around the world. So it's going to be interesting. Nice to see you again. Question. We have Wi-Fi here, right? Yes. Okay, I will I will set up because I'll try to live stream the event on Rappler. A F F A L. A F F A L. 217. Thank you. Il y a 70 ans, la Déclaration universelle des droits de l'homme était adoptée par l'Assemblée générale des Nations Unies au Palais de Chaillot à Paris. Depuis, l'humanité a connu de grands progrès. You know what's horrible with that? It'll be contralighting. Et le nombre de démocraties s'est largement accru. Il a été multiplié par quatre entre la fin de la Seconde Guerre mondiale et l'année 2000. But if I go over there... Nous vivons des circonstances historiques particulières parce que nous pouvons malheureusement craindre un retournement. That's horrible. I don't have many choices. <laughs> Il n'y a pas de démocratie sans information libre, indépendante et fiable. Et l'inverse est vrai. Ah, that's perfect. So I'm honored to be the Lauréate president uh, with Shirin Nobel Bagui de la Paix. for this commission. She received the Nobel Peace Prize. Uh, Shirin uh, and she is one of the chairs of this commission along with RSF. Thank you, Christophe. I should start in English for this uh, uh, small round table about situations in the world. I have the pleasure to, uh, to welcome Maria Ressa. She is a journalist and CEO of The Rappler. 
you know, almost 97% of Filipinos who are on the internet are on Facebook. For Rappler, uh, social media is both a positive and a negative. It is both good and evil, depending on how it's used. But free speech is being used to stifle free speech. Hate is used to pound you into silence. And, and for all of our countries, how do we give free speech without the excesses of people who want to manipulate this new technology? The condition in the Philippines is offering us a capsule into the future of where things could go really terribly wrong. This is Antoine from RSF, Shirin Abadi, the Nobel Prize laureate, and Ziga from Moscow. Watching you manage the dual roles of producer and subject. It's, it's painful. It's, it's delightful. It's not painful. It's, it's beautiful. But do you think the French understand that if Facebook hadn't taken down the 30,000 fake accounts that Macron may not be president? Or they don't really think that that's that important? I suspect they don't really think it's that important. And I actually, it's an interesting question whether it is or isn't. So, so. Oh, that's interesting. So the impact of Facebook on actual behavior yeah. turns out to be a very, very poorly studied phenomenon. You it's have to, you have to come to our countries. How would you describe journalism in Turkey today? most risky and dangerous profession at the moment. Imagine a country where people doesn't have a chance to reach the truth. It's like a global illness. So we need to find global solutions to grow this kind of global illnesses. That's why we are here. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. We have an hour with President Macron. I want to understand how one head of state who's holding the line, what, the way he looks at it, and what he thinks is even possible. I want to ask him what can be done. What are other leaders in democracies talking about? Yay. Thank you. Where do you live? In Manila? In Manila, yeah. I had been in Manila many, many years ago. Oh. Please, if you ever come, I'd love to show you yeah, yeah. the city. How long have you been in exile? Since 2009. And your family? In Iran. Wow. I hope I don't have to go into exile. <laughs> I know it's speaking about you. I'm also in exile. Sufficiently cynical that my normal expectation for a meeting with a, a head of state is is um, that will be a prop. That essentially it will be a performance for some political purpose. But it was a remarkable sense that you were actually having a conversation with somebody who actually has power uh, to influence uh, political relations. So we'll see what actually comes of it. It was an off-the-record discussion with him. Macron is one of the leaders that was targeted by these bad actors on social media. Is he a leader with liberal values? Does he stand for things that the geopolitical actors did not want? Who was behind those 30,000 fake accounts? That's interesting to me. He probably knows. He certainly didn't say anything about it. The Constitution of the Philippines gives me certain rights that protect my ability to do my job. All of that was stripped away by the social media platforms. There is absolutely no accountability for the platforms to spread lies exponentially. You should not allow it to spread. That's what I'm looking for. That's immediate relief.